Alright, hi everyone, it's time for another news video. So Unity Technologies has finally joined the Blender Development Fund. This is great news, I mean it seems like a very appropriate fit, considering that Unity is all about providing free tools for people to help them develop their own video games. But the applications of Unity have certainly grown over the years, it's definitely not just limited to games, and I think this multi-purpose aspect fits really well with Blender, considering that both are bridging into multiple different types of industries. I'll leave a link to the blog post below, but I'm going to read a couple of segments from it. Ton Rosendahl says, 10 years ago Unity already offered support for Blender files to Unity users. And yeah, that is true, it wasn't completely perfect, but it was good enough if you wanted to transfer data from Blend files over to Unity. It was quite a smooth process, but I always opted to use the FBX format wherever possible. But there are a few problems with that because it's a proprietary format, which means that it's a bit difficult to implement in free and open source software. So I think whenever people add support for open formats, it's a benefit for everyone. But saying that, there's lots of good formats that have come along recently which are useful for everyone, like the GLTF format, which I know is well supported with the Godot game engine. I think you can also use it with Unity, but I haven't checked it in a while. Whether or not it's supported natively, there's definitely plugins out there to bridge the gap. Anyway, going back to the blog post, a spokesperson from Unity says, At Unity, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it. This has always been at the core of our business, and as such, our values align with those of the Blender Foundation, and it seems a natural fit to continue our support of an open ecosystem that enables millions of users to create 3D content with a free tool. And that comes from Dave Rhodes, Senior Vice President and General Manager. So yeah, I agree with all of that, I think that's a really good move on their part. The only thing I would ask is why did it take this long for Unity to join the development fund, considering that Epic came beforehand? Although I do know that Epic has a lot more money to throw around, I mean they're still doing their exclusivity push in the video game market. I don't know how many of you know about that, but just to briefly sum it up, in an attempt to break Valve or Steam's monopoly on the digital gaming market, they're offering lots of exclusivity deals to developers that are coming out with new titles. This means the game will only be available with Epic's game launcher on PC, but a lot of these deals only last for about 12 months, but it's still long enough to rile up the communities of the video games. But I know with all these practices going on, it does make people question the motives behind companies throwing money at Blender. But as Ton has always tried to assure people, just because they provide money, it doesn't mean they get to pull strings in any way. The more money, the more developers, the faster Blender gets features. And just keep in mind, Blender has, and will probably always have, the GPL license behind it. Anyway, next up is something that's gotten people really excited recently. It's a freely available screen space global illumination add-on for Eevee. Some of the results that are coming out of this are quite amazing, it's really helping to bring the quality of the renders closer to those of cycles, while of course maintaining just a fraction of the render times. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, and there's also a good trailer you can watch that will give you an overview of the effect. As well as that, there's a Blender artist thread that provides more information, with more details of how the system works, so there's a lot for you to sink your teeth into. I haven't had a chance to try this out yet, but I will very soon. CG Matter over on the Default Cube channel did a very good video showing it off, called Eevee is Unstoppable, so I'll leave a link to that as well. It's definitely worth a watch and he's a pretty good hype man for the tool. More post-processing effects are definitely something that Eevee can use. I mean I don't know whether to call this strictly a post-processing effect, well it is because it's screen space, but it seems like something that would work well as an inbuilt engine feature as well. And one thing that's really caught my eye is the fact that it apparently has support for emissive material lighting. Now I think that's really cool, and if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm practically addicted to emissive lighting. In fact that's one of the reasons I've been using Cycles a lot more recently compared to Eevee, even though Eevee is perfectly capable of producing beautiful renders, as you may have seen in my last video. So I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. But I would love to see more variety with post-processing effects in the Eevee rendering engine in the future. I saw on the roadmap that they were interested in having some kind of real-time compositing for the viewport, which is something that I think would definitely be welcome. I'm not too sure when that will come along, but when there's more news I'll be sure to let you know. But anyway, moving on, the Blender Conference 2020 is actually going to happen, albeit online rather than face to face. They now have a page about it on the Blender website, which is conference.blender.org 2020. So it's going to happen on the 30th of October at 6pm CET, and you can watch it live on their website if you want to jump in. An interesting thing they're doing is offering people an opportunity to make a 2 minute video, basically saying what you've done throughout the year with Blender. And then I'm not sure whether they're going to show them all together or spread them out, but I think it'll be fun to watch. If you have an idea, they want to know what happened with you in the past year, how did the world situation affect you, and they also want to know what you did with Blender. And that can be anything, animations, add-ons, tech demos, showreels, but they're specifically asking people not to use it as an advertisement segment. 
So don't try and use this two minute opportunity to advertise your company, instead make it personal. So yeah, I might make something for that, it seems like it might be pretty interesting. But another thing they're doing to make the virtual conference interesting this year that I would definitely try to get my hands on is the Beacon 20 comfort box. They say a conference is not a real conference without the goodies. To give you a real together apart feeling, we will stuff a small box full of goodies. A conference t-shirt, stroopwaffles, postcards, stickers, a special message from the Blender Foundation chairman, and more. I would have liked to have gone to the Blender conference this year, but of course it had to be cancelled given everything that's going on. My first time going was last year and that was really enjoyable, although I only went for the first day, but I did get to meet a lot of really cool people. And I should also say thank you to those of you that came up and said hi, because it was very nice to meet you. But yeah, I hope everyone comes together and makes it a really nice one this year, even though it's being done over the internet. We can all have a party online or something, maybe we'll stream or do something fun on the Discord. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. One more thing I want to add from our lovely friends at CG Boost is that Martin Kleckner has done a video called Free Substance Painter Alternatives Armor Paint vs Quixel Mixer. I think this is great, I love videos that show the different tools available for everyone, depending on your price range, your skill level, etc. Martin actually did make a course for CG Boost called the Substance Painter Launchpad, which sort of goes hand in hand with the Blender Launchpad made by Zacharias Reinhardt, and I can highly recommend both of these if you're looking to learn the softwares. As you may know I've been a massive fan of them for a long time. It's definitely worth checking out, I mean Martin goes into a lot of detail and he's got a lovely presentation style, so if you want to watch that then I'll leave a link in the description. And I'll also include my affiliate links for their courses as well just in case you want to pick them up. So yeah, I think that'll do it for this video, hopefully you found some of these things interesting, and I hope you've been doing well and staying safe. Remember you can follow me on my social medias, and you can join our Discord server to take part in discussions, share your work, and get sneak previews of upcoming projects. So until the next video, I'm going to go and play the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, so thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.